Hi friends, today we will be learning on streptococcus. Streptococcus, they are gram-positive cocci, they are catalase negative. In case of staphylococcus, when we studied earlier, it was catalase positive. The gram-positive cocci as a whole are divided into two groups based on this catalase test. The catalase positive uh, family it is Micrococci and catalase negative it is Streptococci and uh, the Staphylococcus comes under Micrococci family and the Streptococcus comes under Streptococci family. So this catalase negative I mean this Streptococcus is catalase negative. Unlike Staphylococcus this streptococcus is arranged in pairs or in chains. They are arranged in pairs or in chains. Staphylococcus, it appears as a bunch of grapes. But in case of this streptococcus, they are arranged in pairs or in chains. On the basis of the oxygen requirement, the streptococci are divided into two aerobes and facultative anaerobes and the second group it is obligate anaerobes. Aerobes and facultative anaerobes forms the majority of this streptococci species and uh, obligate anaerobes they they can live only in the uh, in the absence of oxygen. Uh, example for that is peptostreptococcus. And coming to the aerobes and facultative anaerobes, they require, they grow well in the presence of oxygen. And facultative anaerobe means if there is no oxygen, they can convert themselves into anaerobes. And these uh, aerobes and facultative anaerobes are again classified into, uh, on the basis of their hemolytic property, they are classified into alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis and gamma hemolysis. Alpha hemolysis means a partial hemolysis will be occurring there and beta hemolysis means the complete uh, hemolysis is occurring there and gamma hemolysis means no hemolysis at all. The partial hemolysis is evident by while we culture the streptococci on a blood agar plate uh, there will be a clear zone not that clear it is a green color green colored zone will be seen and it indicates partial hemolysis or alpha hemolysis and in case of beta hemolysis in blood agar there will be a clear zone around the colonies like that of staphylococcus we had seen earlier and in case of gamma hemolysis, as there is no hemolysis, there will be no zone of clearance. And the example for gamma hemolysis is enterococcus. And in case of alpha hemolysis, the example uh, are streptococcus pneumoniae and streptococcus viridans. And the beta hemolytic group or that uh, class contain a lot of uh, streptococcus species and these they are again grouped into uh, a grouped into different groups from group a to group w group a to group w except i and j excluding i and j there is no group uh, in the name of i and j but group a to w is the excluding I and J and this grouping is known as Lansfield grouping and it is based on the carbohydrate antigen present on the cell surface of this streptococcus and example uh, includes example includes group A uh, streptococcus pyogens and group B streptococcus agalactae and these are, these are uh, the important um, pathogens of human importance and coming to the virulence factors in like that of uh, 
staphylococcus here also three important virulence factors are there cell wall associated factors toxins and extracellular enzymes first we will see cell wall associated factors cell wall associated factors includes peptidoglycan lipoticoic acid m protein group specific carbohydrate antigen capsule and f factor coming to peptidoglycan the in case of as in case of all the gram positive organism here the peptidoglycan is thicker and it give strength and rigidity to the cell wall and the next one is lipoticoic acid it helps in the addition and prevent opsonization and coming to m protein m protein is fimbria associated protein uh, if you you can imagine the cell membrane of an organism or this streptococcus so the first and the lowest layer will be the plasma membrane and on the above the plasma membrane there is cell wall and on on the top of that there will be a slime layer the fimbria will be originating from the cell wall through the slime wall and on that fimbria this m protein is the fimbria associated protein and lipoticoic acid will be present in the cell wall next group specific carbohydrate antigen it is uh, placed between peptidoglycan and plasma membrane in the cell wall this plasma membrane means cell membrane cell membrane and uh, plasma membrane i mean uh, peptidoglycan in between that group specific carbohydrate antigen is there next is capsule capsule they are handy phagocyto phagocytic and the f factor it helps in the addition it is also a uh, what flagella I mean fimbria factor fimbria associated factor then coming to the toxins next group of virulence factor toxins uh, the toxins in streptococcus in, comes under streptococcal pyrogenic ex exotoxins spe spe there are three types of spe spe a spe b and spe c spe a is bacteriophage coded that means uh, if any virus or bacteriophage happens to infect the streptococcus and then with the help of the uh, genome it, genetic information in the bacteriophage it will get uh, combined with the genome of this bacteria and the this SPEA toxin is encoded that means if the streptococcus is as such in a, an infected form it will be not producing this toxin but if a virus happens to infect this streptococcus it will start producing this toxin with the help of the genetic information present in the bacteriophage <coughs> then SPEB it is chromosomally mediated and then last one SPEC it is also bacteriophage coded these two SPE and SPA uh, SPEA and SPC SPEC together they are known as super antigen super antigen because it uh, results in the extreme release of interleukins super antigen it uh, mediates the extreme release of interleukins that is why it is known as super antigens so it mediates a high immune response
another thing you have to take note here is that of dick test dick test it is uh, done to test if if anyone is uh, susceptible to this streptococcal infection this spe was previously called as erythrocytic or scarlet fever toxin erythrocytic or scarlet fever toxin because its intradermal injection is in susceptible children causes local erythema because of this local erythema it was previously known as erythrocytic or scarlet fever toxin uh, that spe was known as this and the last one it is enzymes extracellular enzymes the extracellular enzymes the first one it is streptokinase streptokinase mediates the conversion of uh, plasminogen into plasmin this plasmin helps in the breakdown of fibrin barrier around the infected site and it cause this um, breakdown of fi fibrin barrier it cause the causes the spread of infection usually if we have any infection at our skin or something like that there will be uh, infiltration of this neutrophils and uh, if there is bleeding the fibrin will be there for initiate to initiate the blood clotting this fibrin can be dissolved by this plasmin with the help of streptokinase so the blood clotting is weakened and it causes the spread of infection then streptodornase streptodornase helps in the breakdown of dna host dna then the hyaluronic hyaluronidase it helps in the lysis of connective tissue you can break down the connective tissue network and the next one it is nadase and it acts on the coenzyme nad and then next two uh, enzymes are spy cp and c5a peptidase these two are pro serine protease serine protease which activates interleukin 8 this interleukin 8 is a neutrophil chemo attracted like i said during this uh, thing breakdown of fibrin barrier here also uh, in the infected site there will be um, the production of interleukin 8 which attracts the neutrophils neutrophils helps the helps to combat the infection and to uh, resize the um, infection of that area but this spicy p serine protease this inactivates ilt so this ilt will not produce the chemicals that attracts neutrophil and so the uh, combat against battle against this infection will be paused and which thus in turn helps in the spread of disease or infection this c5a peptidase it is also a serine protease which cleaves c5a peptidase means breakage breaking of protein so c5a peptidase cleaves c5a which is also a neutrophil chemo attractant the pathogenesis like we told in case of staphylococcus here also the pathogenesis includes uh, pathogenesis progressed by colonization of this organism streptococcus and it enters the body invades using extracellular enzymes evade host immunity by producing toxins and they spread to various organs and cause various clinical Coming to the clinical features of streptococcus infection, the first one is the respiratory infection. It includes pharyngitis and scarlet fever. 
pharyngitis and scarlet fever. Pharyngitis, it is characterized by the inflammation of throat and the characteristic infection caused by the streptococcus is scarlet fever. It is caused by the SPE toxin and uh, the scarlet fever is characterized by the rashes due to hypersensitivity reaction to toxic toxins rashes on skin then coming to the skin and soft tissue infection caused by streptococcus it includes two type of infection impetigo and erysipelas impetigo and erysipelas impetigo is the honeycomb like clusters blisters will be there and in case of erysipelas the skin will be tender reddened and swollen and then comes the deep soft tissue infection. It includes bacteremia, that is invasion of uh, blood by the bacteria, DSS, toxic shock syndrome, and then last one, necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis is also a deep soft tissue infection. Then coming to the lab diagnosis, the first one is, is the sample collection. Samples are <coughs> throat swab, saliva, sputum, etc. And then these collected samples are transported to the lab using a transport medium, Pikes Media. The uh, media transport media specialized for this streptococcus is Pikes Media. Then they are gram stained. Gram staining is done. And then the culture they are cultured in blood agar if the characteristic feature of this thing it is uh, beta hemolysis the selective media for uh, streptococcus is crystal violet blood agar and pnf media pnf the culture selective media to culture the selective media used for culturing the streptococcus is crystal violet blood agar and PNF media. And in liquid media, like in growth, the characteristic uh, growth appearance is they give granular turbidity, granular tur turbidity and powdery deposit. Then comes the culture microscopy to study the features and then biochemical test the characteristic biochemical test is the catalase test the streptococcus is catalase negative and finally the antimicrobial susceptibility test they are uh, the streptococcus is bacitracin sensitive bacitracin is an antibiotic and the streptococcus is sensitive against bacitracin Thank you, that's all about this streptococcus.